So now we're going to talk about parent functions. So there are seven, I believe it is, technically, well, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, yeah, seven different models that you're going to need to know. And then there's something called generically power models. Now, we're talking about the most unmodified form of each of these, which for linear would be y equals x, that is slope of 1, y-intercept 0, which would look like this. So this is the most basic form. In every case, we're talking about the least modified basic form of these. So when we look at the y equals the absolute value, we're talking about absolute value, we're talking about the absolute value of x, which is going to have a y-intercept of 0, and is going to have a slope of 1, and a slope of negative 1. Remember, absolute value takes the magnitude, that is the distance, from 0, which means in the positive it's unchanged. In the negative, it becomes positive because magnitude, kind of like distance, is always positive. When you end up with a square root. Now, a square root is an interesting one because taking the square root means that you cannot take the square root of a negative number, which means you're not going to have negative x values involved. Nor, when you take the square root, will you get a negative which means that you're not going to have negative y values. So for the most basic form, this is unmodified, we have to have, be looking at strictly quadrant 1. Now we can take the square root of 0, and we get 0, so that's included. Now remember, square root, when I take the square root of 1, it's 1. When I take the square root of 4, however, it's 2. So we've got a function that does not increase ra very rapidly. In fact, a lot of people characterize this as like half a quadratic or half a parabola put on its side. And you'd be right, because they are indeed inverse operations. The next one is the inverse model. Now, the inverse model means that we're taking the multiplicative inverse, that is, we're multiplying by the reciprocal, a.k.a. 1 divided by x. Now, something interesting happens here. We cannot divide by 0, which means when we plug 0 in for x, it is not possible. It's undefined, so there is no value there. Okay. Um, that means that we are looking at, well, let's take a look. Uh, when we do 1 divided by 1, however, it is possible. Now, as we move here toward larger and larger positive values, we're taking 1 dividing by larger numbers, which means that this is going to go ahead and decrease. That is 1 divided by 2, 1 divided by 3, until what? Well, if we take like 1 divided by a billion, that means we're taking 1 and putting it into a billion pieces. That means each piece is incredibly small, meaning what we see is a trend as we head towards positive infinity that this is approaching zero. That is, it's exhibiting what's called asymptotic behavior. Now, as we move closer and closer to zero, remember we can't be equal to zero, but we could be equal to like one half. What is one divided by one half? Well, that would be what? Two. How many times is half? That'd be one. So as we get closer, from like one divided by one third, right, that would be three, we see a dramatic increase in the values such that it's another asymptotic type behavior. So we've got this L-shaped graph that's tending towards the y-axis, and then tending towards the x. When we put the negative in, it means that the x values are negative and commensurately the y values are negative, which means we have a graph that exists in quadrants 1 and 3, just like this. Now, an inverse square is similar, especially with respect to the asymptotic behavior, except we're squaring it. Technically, we're squaring both, but one squared you cannot tell. What's the effect of squaring? Well, it does cause this to decrease more rapidly. Um, and it also causes it to increase more rapidly. So we get a similar kind of effect, but more dramatic, in the first quadrant. However, when we're talking about negative values of x, which locate us over here, it means that the y values are going to be positive, because when we square things, they end up being positive. So we get this kind of smokestack-shaped graph, for lack of anything else. Now, quadratic and cubic. Quadratic, pretty straightforward. The most basic form of quadratic is y equals x squared, which we know has a vertex at 0 and increases just like this, related to our friend the square root model right above, right? y equals x cubed, you may not remember, but it does look like similar, uh, except what it does is increases a bit more dramatically here in the positive. Remember, positive number cubed is going to be positive. But when you take a negative number, and remember, negative number squared are always going to be positive. When you take a negative number and you cube it, it still ends up being negative. So we get kind of this type of graph, which does have rotational symmetry. That is, if I rotate this point 180 degrees about the origin, it does map onto itself. Okay. Now, power models in general are of the form 
y equals x to the n power, where n is an integer that can be even or odd. So these are your two big choices. In general, if n is even, it's going to look like a quadratic. So if I was to look at y equals x to the fourth, it would look a lot like a quadratic because both sides are going, both things are going to be positive, except it's going to increase more rapidly. So something like y equals x to the fourth is going to be a bit narrower because it's increasing more rapidly than squaring because we're multiplying by itself four times. Whereas if I was looking at x to the fifth, it would do the same thing but much faster. That is, anything to an odd power, well, positive will be positive, but negative will be negative. So they're all going to take the shape of, that is, when we're talking about n being even, it's going to look more and more like, it's going to look like a lot like a quadratic, and when n is odd, it's going to look more like a cubic. 